Oh, here's another little, uh, little oversight. Hey guys, James here today and welcome to an early access video of The Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle. Thank you so much to EA Game Changers for making this possible. I am recording from home on an early access version of this expansion pack. So my origin ID will be like a little watermark going around the screen, just so you know. Also, I know The Sim Supply is dead, but he does live on as an origin ID. That is still my name. Uh, but anyway, that's why that's there. So we're going to be taking a tour of the world, the new world that comes with Eco Lifestyle. Evergreen Harbor, the brand new world right here. I thought we'd have a little look at the animated icon for it. Uh, it's always nice to see how these play out. Now you can see there's some little god rays coming down through the clouds. That's uh, a little indication of what we can find. So once we open up the map, we can see there are 15 lots. So it's not the biggest world. But it's also not the smallest, but I mean, quite frankly, in the last, what, like two years, really, we've not had any big world so i think we can officially say goodbye to you know worlds the size of windenburg even though i think that was the only one that was ever that big or even i mean brindleton bay was pretty good too that's probably still one of my favorite worlds this one may be up there though i've enjoyed what i've played so far but obviously it's going to take a little bit more time to decide if i'm going to keep playing it but in those 15 lots four of them are actually apartments very similar to what we got in city living so this one over here has two units in it if we click on it we can see them here so side by side contained units which means it's not really Really a full lot uh, and then the other one over here as well there's a couple of units in it right there they're not full lots by that count then so really there's 11 full-sized lots and then four apartments and out of those 11 full-sized lots there are seven uh, houses that are there and then three of them one in each neighborhood with this icon are the community project lots uh, which are the ones you can vote on in game through gameplay and they change and we will check those out because they are pretty cool and then the remaining lot is the bar because of course every single world for some reason has to have a bar thank god Thank God there's a bar in the world. I would have been so upset. We don't, we really don't need more bars. I, I honestly think it's just because with an expansion pack and the base game, there's not a huge amount of lot types that they could put in that aren't just like a park or whatever. So I think that's just there because they're like, I don't know, a bar, sure. Right, and also looking at this world map, you might also notice something else. We have down here some smog clouds around this neighborhood. That actually indicates that it is uh, polluted. This one's got like some sun beams and god rays, which indicate that it's really clean and green. This one just looks normal, which means it is normal, it is neutral. Sorry, I glitched that out. It is nothing too special over there. And if you want to clear a visual because it's not clear enough, up here, the little foot icon, uh, highlighted green means it's, you know, really good. Highlighted yellow means it's really bad. And white is just neutral. Now, each of the neighborhoods we've got up here, we've got Grimm's Quarry. When famous Arnold Grimm's founded his famous rock quarry in Evergreen Harbor, he could hardly have predicted the little suburb that would spring up around it decades later. Today, a cozy set of homes, apartments, and spaces for community use sits in the shadow of the walls of striking white stone. So this is Grimm's Quarry. Uh, it's got the big quarry over there, the big walls that's the idea that's what it's named after this town i guess was sort of built up around the idea of jobs at the quarry that's the sort of backstory of it and you get all of this sort of area here most of this is decorative but we do have a lot here that's an apartment block over there then we have the lot we're on right now which i believe is the one just here and then on top of that we have the community lot over there so most of these are just decorative and while i agree it looks very nice i i do wish we had more lots especially in areas like this where it looks like there could be more but in any case this is what the neighborhood looks like this is sort of the area you get to play around with uh, it's quite it's quite a nice space. I think it's definitely interesting I haven't seen this area change yet because this is the cleanest area I haven't seen it get polluted or trashed and I would actually like to see what that looks like But this is the area of Grimm's quarry and we got Port Promise the beautiful polluted harbor Which I think is my favorite place. Uh, that's where I've played pretty much completely so far What was once a bustling trade port now holds a number of homes and businesses that pay homage to their industrial roots and aim to as local expression goes keep evergreen kooky while the actual port may no longer be running the promise of something better remains so this is port promise this is what it looks like when you first load up your save game so this is what it's going to be it's quite polluted the air is quite brown 
down. That is something, of course, you change through gameplay and you can make it look nice and green and all that. In my Let's Play, I'm doing a mini Let's Play coming out. It's a six part series. I actually clean up this neighborhood and it's also looking quite clean at the end. There's lots of plants and stuff come back. But we've got this lot over here, this house right next to the dam there. This old sort of factory, I guess, or water treatment place by the looks of it. Looks like maybe some sewage treatment ponds or something going on here. Not sure exactly. But this is all the area here. It's all mostly just um, decoration around there. Over that there is a dumpster. You can dive in and find some good items though. That there is the bar lot, which we'll tour soon as well. Uh, and so that's one of the lots there. There's another lot over here, which we'll obviously take a closer look later. But just as an idea of where the lots are, you can sort of see if we go back here, uh, on the left of the screen is a community lot, on the right is one of the residential lots. In the middle is the one we're at now. And you can sort of, this is the neighborhood, this is the space you get to work with here. It's pretty cool. I actually, I actually this is probably my favorite place in this world, I think. This, this is my favorite neighborhood. And then up here, we've got Conifer Station. What happens when the trains stop running? Downtown Evergreen, affectionately known to the locals as Conifer Station, may be a bit quieter nowadays, but residents will tell you that the defunct train station and unsightly storage tanks hide a hard-working community eager to improve their little corner of the world. This is the more sort of urban or downtown-y area. This is a Conifer Station named after the old train station, which is over here, which has been defunct and no longer has any trains running through it. So this is all just decorative. Your Sims can actually walk up to this area here. Whoops, I didn't mean to actually send them there, but they, they can go up there. We have the community project lot just here, and then back over in the town area, we've got an apartment block over here, which is where you can live. And I believe there's another lot just here on the corner, and then the house we're currently in over here. So that is the area of uh, the Conifer Station. Similar, I guess, to Grimm's Quarry, but obviously it has more sort of uh, scenery of buildings around the place, much more sort of urbanized. That's kind of the idea, but we have this nice scenery around here. But I definitely think my favorite, even out of all three of these, is still Port Promise. I love the industrial sort of harbor area for sure. So we're gonna check out this home right here. It's where my current sim is. Uh, it's one of the three homes you can buy by default, I guess not including the apartment. So we'll check it out. It is a shipping container home. And by default, it's actually off the grid, which is uh, had a lot of updates in this pack, but we're not really gonna go over gameplay sort of stuff here. So this is the lot. It is. I mean, the I, the outside I actually find quite interesting, especially for a default build. I, I really don't mind it. Though, the one thing that I will say about this lot, um, and it annoys me with any lot like this, uh, where it's a lot placed on somewhere that clearly has a specific flooring. Like the, around here, we got like a sort of a loading dock area with all this asphalt around it. And a similar thing in Brindleton Bay on the dock with all the wood. Uh, when you remove the terrain, or the, I guess in this case is it floor tiles, when we remove this, underneath is a terrain that just doesn't match at all. Uh, I would really love to see them use this texture just underneath, because then you could still paint over it with grass if you wanted to, or paint over it with concrete if you wanted to, but at least the default would always match. Because the problem I have with it is it just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, which is a bit of a bit of a shame. But I mean, other than that, I, I quite like the look of the lot. I mean, I don't know about the grass on top here, because it seems like there's not really that much depth to have grass on top of the shipping container. Uh, but this is one of the little starter homes that you get. There is no fridge um, or kitchen really, but that's kind of the point because they have a barbecue up top and a little uh, vertical planter garden. So it might seem weird. I, some of these homes actually may seem very weird because of the stuff that they're missing, but because this is an off the grid house and by default, there's no power generation here or water collection. The idea is you kind of build up from there. Anyway, so that's the first lot. We can't spend this long on every lot, but that's it there. I actually quite like it. I think it's a nice little starting point and no problems there. So have a look at this beautiful bar lot, the caboose right here, which by the way, the world detailing, uh, as per usual, I think this is very common. I think this is something that they do exceptionally well these days is the worlds always look really, really nice. And this world in particular, well, the whole of Evergreen Harbor changes its look depending on how it is. So right now it's quite dirty and gross and there's trash everywhere, but this all disappears and cleans up. You get all bushes and trees through here as it grows and it changes. Uh, so right now it's a bit dirty, but it actually gets quite clean later. But this bar, uh, <laughs> by default, has an overlapping roof for some reason. Uh, so that's uh, another classic EA build for you. There's also uh, what appears to be a missing column over this side. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this tour, <laughs> yeah, this, this is an EA, this is what I expect from an EA build, which is a bit of a shame because, you know, I was hoping uh, we'd have a clean bill of health for this uh, PAX pre-built, but I guess not. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's not a missing column because that side doesn't, no, it's got to be a missing column because there's not one here. It doesn't really, why would you have three columns there? Okay, no, they're, they're missing. They're missing. They should be there. They're not. Inside, it's a little sad. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is this room? Uh, a little sad. <laughs> um, a little bar, uh, and that's kind of it. That's the bar. I mean, I, I almost never visit bars in this game anyway, so I'll probably just change this to something else. Then we have this place, the old mill. So clearly it's supposed to be an old water mill that was sitting here. Uh, and I can definitely see the aesthetic there, because I, I did originally think, I was like, what is this house? But then with the title of the old mill, it kind of makes sense in terms of the aesthetic. I mean, it's st still is a very interesting looking place. But you know what? I kind of, I do kind of commend this kind of thing because it is something different. It is something a little bit wacky. And I actually kind of like it. I kind of like how, how bad it looks, to be honest. I mean, there is some weird things going on here. There's like a column missing. Uh, potentially was supposed to be a column here. Although I think that, you know what, I think that's actually more glitch with spandrels. I was messing around with spandrels the other day, and I had a lot of issues with them. And I think they're a bit weird. I don't think that should, yeah, see, it does that. It really should just stop and not go down again. Anyway, that is a bit weird. Uh, so that that's clearly probably not ideal. But yeah, this is a lot here. It sits along uh, right next to the dam, which I guess makes... Whoa, <laughs> that was that was a crack. Which I guess makes a lot more sense, because in the trailer reaction, I was like, it seems very odd to have a house here. Like, that's kind of... That's an awful place to live. But considering it's an old mill, uh, that makes way more sense. That, that makes so much more sense that it's there. And then clearly they've repurposed it, so... This side... <laughs> I get it. it. It is a repurposed mill, so they put in nice big windows, but it, it really did. I hope that these two sims here don't think their place looks good. Downstairs, I mean, it's... it. Look, it's not my taste of home, but we've got a kitchen, we've got a, a sink and a stove and a bin. Oh, they even got a little boot room. That's kind of cool. Although, it, it's a little far inside the house. Wouldn't you want it near one of the doors? It's kind of in the middle, but anyway, that's kind of cool. Uh, out the back, a little barbecue, some planting areas on the side. Oh, here's another little, uh, little oversight. No railing around these stairs. I mean, it could be a stylistic choice, but I doubt it because that is very strange to just have a hole in the floor. So we're missing some railing there. Uh, interestingly, they've used this door, which has this giant frame around it, which I really, the, the problem is I really like this door. Sorry, this is not a build by overview. I really like this door, um, but like from this, like look at that, how nice is that door? Then it has this giant frame on it. It's such a shame. It is nice to use it once, like outside for a door, but you can't use it anywhere else. And and I don't think they should have used it here, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> okay, so we got the missing railing there. Let's move up. <laughs> Ooh, ladder, nice. Yeah, okay, the missing railing was definitely an, an oversight because they've got a half wall here. Uh, this one's safe. A uh, little bedroom floor, a little fireplace, a little home office. And then up top with the ladder, we got a little craft room. Very nice. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Like, that's fine. So really, uh, the missing railing and some columns, uh, a little strange. I mean, it's also not the nicest looking build, but I kind of think that's part of its charm. Like, it is kind of ugly, but I kind of like that. Now we're looking at the waterfront. If you come into the game fresh, not really knowing what this is, it is pretty sad looking. Though I think, even in this state, I think this is actually awesome. I love this lot, and I love the other community project lots, which this is one of. So this is a community space. This is actually a really cool lot. So this is something in-game through gameplay the neighborhood will vote on. So n not the whole world, only people that live in these lots or in this neighborhood will go to the voting board. It's over there, which I can't really get to right now. Anyway, they vote on it and then it can change. It can change, it can be revitalized into a community garden, a marketplace or a maker space. And you can customize all of these, including the default. You can customize this, you can come up, customize these three. So by default, this is what it looks like. It's got trash everywhere. I, I think, quite frankly, it looks freaking awesome. Like, this is so cool. I don't know. I love this. I absolutely love this. The aesthetic of it is so industrial. It matches perfectly sitting on the sort of port right here. And then, it, this is like four lots in one, really. You change it to community garden, it'll load. And here it is. Like, so it changes into this guy, which again, very similar. Like, it's based off the same structure. Obviously, it's changed a little bit. And then I sort of added all this other stuff in here. A lot of places to grow stuff and, and vertical planters, a dew collector. The community voting board is here. That's what it looks like. They got all this extra space. I don't know. I think this is really cool. Not only is it a cool gameplay function, it's a really cool build mode function too. So we ought to have different states of lots. And I actually really hope that they use this feature for other things in the future. Like, I think lot states could be really cool. Like, even if it was a hidden thing, like if your house burnt down or something and you had a, like a burned down state of your house or something. So even even if you had to do it manually and it was like a sort of a story element that we could... I don't know, like there's a lot of potential for lot switching. Anyway, so this is the community garden version. 
lots of little planters. Then the marketplace, again, similar, stripped back even more. These have sort of turned into little shipping containers on top. But this one has like a food store, it's got market selling tables, like a little market hall downstairs now. Uh, I don't know, I really, I think this, I, I think the lot itself is definitely, it's interesting looking because it is, it was originally that weird industrial building, but I think it really, really works. And then lastly, we have the maker space as well. So this is where you can come if you vote for this one, you can come and craft and fabricate things, make fizzy drinks, recycle things, make candles over there. And here got like a little kid's craft room as well, which is really, really nice. I don't know, I, I really like, this is a very good lot. These, all these community spaces I think are fantastic. I think they're really fun. It's something new and different. And just having these different options, I think is really, it's really quite cool. Now this one, the Portsmouth Promenade. This has got to be by far my favorite lot in this world, potentially in the game, the default pre-made lot that is. I think this is so fun. Obviously this is clearly not everyone's aesthetic, but I love this sort of industrial vibe. I love the kind of trashy vibe as well. It's very recycled, like all these different chairs here, all these plants everywhere. I don't know, it feels so, gritty and well, not even gritty it is it's clean i guess gritty is not the right word it feels so detailed and rich like there's so much going on here and the creativity of this being like a crane as well fully functional by the way not in terms of it being a crane but in terms of being able to live in it i think it's so fun so down here we've got a shipping container this is your front door right here this is a new door in the game a little shipping container door that goes into the main living space a little kitchen this is an off the grid lot as well, so that's why there's no like regular stove. There's a little microwave and a, a little fridge there. Again, using this big framed door inside, I don't know. I, I just don't think that works, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it matches the room quite nicely, but I don't know. Bathroom in here, a couple of planters. You can actually do some greenery and grow some plants in here, which is kind of cool. Nice little bathroom. And I think it's really nicely detailed. There's no railing on those stairs, but I, I don't think it really needs them. So I'm not gonna dock them any points on that one. In here we have a little bathroom because this bathroom here is actually for the bedroom all the way up here. Whoops, all the way up here. So there's a bedroom in the crane. Like, I don't know. I think that is super cool. It's just so much fun. It's wacky, it's kind of silly. I, I, I don't know, I love this lot, I love it, I love it. Now we're gonna move over to Conifer Station, which is this neutral neighborhood by default. We're gonna go check out the Tinkers. Okay, thanks, <laughs> thanks game. So this is, I guess, one of the bigger houses. Now, I feel like uh, EA and Maxis don't really have the greatest track record for these. I mean, I don't really know what's going on at the front here, like with this roof overhanging, and then like a flat platform here. Was this supposed to be a balcony or is it just, I don't know. Is it supposed to have columns there or is that? I don't know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, oh, what is, what is this roof? Yeah, I don't know, I feel like the bigger the house they build, the worse it gets. I'm, I'm not quite sure how they've managed that. This roof angle is also not even the same, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't actually blend in with the rest of the roof properly. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm excited to see what Kayla does with this lot, because I'm sure she'll make, what, actually, they're even different roof textures. What is going on? Yeah, Kayla, you gotta fix this. This is, uh, <laughs> what? Uh. I mean, okay, this at the back at least is just, it just doesn't look good. Like it's not really, I don't think it's a mistake. I mean, it is a mistake, but I just don't think it looks good. So it's not really like they didn't mean to do that. But I, I don't know about this roof. I, I feel like they maybe f at least forgot to do that, surely. What is this though at the front? Like, is that, I don't know. This is so bizarre. And these roofs don't even line up with the... <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll leave the... <laughs> I leave the fixing to Kayla. She does a good job of that. Oh, this has also got the super tall walls, which is also one of those things that is just never good. It never works. Kayla won't like that. She'll probably make the walls shorter, I reckon. <laughs> so make sure to keep an eye on little Simsy's channel. I'm sure she's going to be fixing up some of the lots in this world. <laughs> so here's a little... I can't see in because of the walls. <laughs> All right, so here's the kitchen in here. It's actually surprisingly cramped for such a tall walled house. Dining room, really nothing too special. Odd little bathroom there. Uh, definitely could, uh, it's got a lot of, look, it's got potential. It's got potential to be good. Uh, they have railings, uh, they've got toilets, that's good. They've got a little crafting room in there, a little kids room, main bedroom. Uh, look, nothing, nothing to really celebrate about this lot, so let's just leave. All right. Canal Corner, here we are, this little house. It is a little starter home on a 20 by 15 plot. And I actually quite like the aesthetic of these, all these little houses here and this matching them. I, I th the one thing I really don't like though is how many houses there are and how few lots we get. I know it's a balance between like, performance and all that kind of stuff, but it, it's kind of, it, it's, a, it's a shame because it's honestly sometimes hard to tell. It's like, well, there's a house over there. There's an apartment over there and there's this lot here. And then all the middle is kind of dead space. There's nothing you can do with it. 
Like even this could have just been like a park, you know, if that was like a little park lot or something, just like a little, I guess a 20 by 20 even would have been nice. I don't know, or even just a larger lot in one of these, and then, I don't know, it's just, it kind of, it's a shame. It would have actually been cool, because they've done these apartments again. If they had done this as maybe one lot, and then these are actually four separate units, that'd just be kind of a cool way to do it, because it means you couldn't change the exterior of them, but you still get the space to work with inside. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know, just a suggestion moving forward. Um, anyway, so this lot, this is what we're actually looking at, not the rest of the world. Um, I mean, exterior, it, it's nothing really to write home about, but I mean, it looks similar to the rest. I, I do like that it matches with the rest of them quite nicely. I mean, it's a, it is quite sad on the inside. It's very gray. It's a very start a home kind of house. Very sad, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. I would probably want to remodel this almost immediately after moving in. So there you go, that's that lot. There's not much, there's not much in there. There's not much wrong with it either. It just is not very nice. But that kind of comes with the territory of it being $18,000. I mean, with $18,000, you could make this a lot more colorful and at least a lot more fun. And you could save a lot of money probably by not doing the hedge around here too. Anyway, it's a basic starter home. So we're in one of the apartment blocks right now. So this is the other unit next door, which we'll check out in a minute. This is uh, the one here. Now, I want to point out, uh, because right now you're probably thinking, wow, this is a really boring, bland, ugly building. This does actually change depending on what you vote in the neighborhood. If you get like a modern revamp, this will look completely different. It actually looks really quite cool. Uh, and I think there's also a variant for like if it's in more industrial too. This is just the neutral, really boring one. Uh, and it kind of looks, I kind of almost wish they'd, done more with this because the neutral default state that every player is going to join the game and see they look really bland and almost just unfinished like even with a white like this it should still probably be a somewhat gritty because it's just in a city like it's not clearly not a new build it's i don't know nothing is ever that clean and white i don't know anyway so here is a little apartment uh very gray again it looks like one of my builds devoid of any color so this is your little front door here it's kind of cool how this works you come up the elevator here and then come through the front doors on the balcony i think it's a nice little setup they have here the way they've done it a uh, little living space you get a little balcony space out here too uh, if i turn on the grid you can actually see what you own so you own that balcony little office with a computer double bed Full, full bathroom. I guess one of the benefits of uh, apartments is they come with more furniture because they're cheaper. You don't have to pay for the whole lot, which is quite nice. Uh, but that's that there. Very, very bland. Could use more color. And just in case you haven't actually played with apartments before, this is how it works. If you click on the building, you actually see the two different units here. They highlight, it tells you the price, how much the furnishings cost, and how much the weekly rent is. So let's just take a look at the other one here as well. So this is our other little unit here with two single bedrooms, a little kitchen in here. A uh, little living room. Oh, wow, they got an expensive TV. Dang. They got a nice TV in here. A uh, little bathroom and a little, be a little bedroom there. I mean, yeah, it it's just a little, a little apartment. Nothing too special about it. That's that. Here is the community project in this neighborhood. It is right here next to the old train line and old train station, which, by the way, is very nice. I kind of would like it if... So your Sims can actually walk up to this top bit here. It would have been really cool. I don't know. I, I don't think they could do it. I mean, it be, would have been really cool if this was the lot, like up here, and maybe even this was part of the, if they turned this whole thing into a lot, I guess if you built it in, in game, and this was like the lot, and then it could transform into like a market hall and all that, how cool would that be? That would have been really cool. But anyway, sorry, I, I should focus on the actual lot. So this is what it looks like a bit default, very trashy. Each of these uh, community lots have recycle machines on them by default as well, so you can always go to them to recycle. Uh, and then they have a bunch of trash. This one is good to note because it actually has uh, bathrooms in it, functioning bathrooms. So if you need to go to the toilet and you're out in the world, you can actually go into one of, in, in here, which is really helpful. Uh, it comes with a dumpster, which you can dumpster dive in as well. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the variants. We've got the community garden, which is this guy here looks very green. Uh, this is actually a fence uh, in case you didn't know. So this, uh, they're using like the curved uh, pieces there on fences. This is just a big fence. Uh, so yeah, they've got all the planting areas there, some solar panels on the roof, a dew collector. Down here, just like a little interior sort of a room with not much going on in it. Still a bathroom though. Still got a toilet, which is handy. And here we have the marketplace, which is set up here. We've got a few little selling tables in the middle, so you can come here and sell the goods that you make. Uh, we've got the community voting board there, a little building, a uh, little food stall as well over on that side, and then just a little interior area with a little, uh, I think this is like a, yeah, it's a dollhouse, another version of a dollhouse. Oh, still a bathroom. That's good. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got the maker space here as well, which is looking a little bit more colorful, using some more shipping container kind of stuff. I do like this crafting area, actually, under that. Uh, and then a little sort of outdoor seating area. That is actually a light, which I was wondering how they use this light. What a weird... It's a, a very odd little little item. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but I guess <laughs> they're putting it there. So there you go. Uh, and then uh, same solar panels on the roof and little indoor fabrication area there too. So that is the uh, community 
space in the conifer station neighborhood would have been cool if it was this though that would have been really cool all right so we're going up to grim's quarry which has three lots and then the two apartments i guess we'll start with this one it's just a little starter home so i'm sure this will look beautiful so first up here is the world similar to the downtown area but uh, i guess a little bit smaller really dirty alleyway i love that that does of course clean up if you clean up the neighborhood because the the trash overlays and stuff like that are actually separate from the eco footprint i believe so you can clean up the trash with initiatives at the voting board and then the actual eco footprint of this so this area is actually very clean so there's no pollution or anything like that. So you can see the Aurora Borealis, which is pretty cool. But it does still have trash, which you can, of course, clean up. So this is our little house. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yep, it's kind of what I expected to see. Uh, more of this beautiful style. Let's have a look. I do, you know, the red door, red door is kind of fun. Uh, you know, I'll give him points for that. That's good, that's good fun. Uh, that's kind of where the fun ends, though. The fun dies as soon as you step in the front door, you know. Uh, at least I have railing, and by railing, I mean a wall. Oh, they do have a railing up here too. And a couple of really gray bedrooms. So, yep, yeah, that's that. No, I mean, no glaring mistakes though, which is nice. That's that's good. <laughs> There's some some bricks there. I wonder if that's actually the... Is that the default texture? Oh, no, they, they added that in. They added a little detail of bricks for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> well, that lot is what it is, I guess. Let's move on. Here we are at Minor Mansion. Well, I don't, I don't know about that, but uh, let's have a look. Let's see. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's not really a mistake. That's just kind of a, an issue with wallpapers, which is why I don't really like using these auto trimming wallpapers because it won't continue down. And then it looks weird because it just stops there. Um, anyway, there's that. Oh, these windows are at oddly different heights for some reason. That's <laughs> that is strange. I don't know about. Did they move that up because they put a, a, a hose there, or is there? Is it, let's see. Is there a reason inside they did that? Nope. There's no reason. How bizarre! Why would you do that? Is it because this is here and they're like, oh, we can't put a window there? Oh, I think I have move objects on actually. Do I? Wait, no. I don't think I put any cheats on, did I? No, it's on now. You don't even need move objects to put it there. Why is the window there? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. At least, just let me just. Yeah, let me just look. Even if it's there, fine, fixed. Okay, let me put it back because we, we're, we're judging. No, 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 sorry, we're not judging. We are touring. We are touring the world. <laughs> no judging. Well, a little bit of judging. I do like that they're using more of the um, configurable stairs now. Although, again, they kind of have forgotten railings on this, so that's not ideal. But let's keep looking at the outside. So window heights are very different here. At least this has more of a reason because the roof is there. So I can kind of let them get away with that. Though I typically wouldn't like to have windows a lot higher than other ones. I would probably just use smaller windows so that the top line would line up and it would probably look a little bit better. And you just got a big flat wall. So And also, why does the door not match the color of those? Or the windows, you know, vice versa. Shouldn't they be the same color? Lounge chairs, uh, a gate that doesn't match the fence. Although I have noticed with uh, gates and fences lately, there are actually, I don't know why they've done that. I hope that's a bug. Well, I don't hope it's a bug, but it's a little strange. I've noticed with fences, if we do this and we've got this color of gate, actually, let's change the color of the gate. If we go to this color of gate and then put it on a diagonal, sometimes it will just like change its color, although it's not doing it now. Anyway, sometimes gates just glitch out. So maybe that was a bug, though it's wrong. So we should note that down. Uh, okay, so moving inside, let's see, uh, looking pretty blank. Oh, is this an off the, no, it's not off the grid. I just thought it might be because it's got all those candles. Nope, no traits. Uh, just candle candelabras for some reason, I guess. <laughs> Very brown. Uh, yeah, so no railing on those stairs, little kitchen. Oh, double sinks. I mean, I don't know that I put double sinks in a kitchen this small, but sure. Little bathroom, downstairs bedroom with a computer. Very nice. Moving up, we've got... Oh, there is a railing on the top, though. That's good. Put the walls down here a little, a little in the way. A lot of indoor planters. Actually, I like that. I didn't even think about using these indoor, like, these vertical planters inside, but it's kind of cool because you could have really nice, like, flowers and little greenery and stuff growing indoors. That should be kind of cool. I got a little, a little boot room for some reason. Like, I, I guess it's supposed to be the, a walk-in wardrobe, but there's no dresser in it. So what's the point? This is literally a waste of space. I mean, it has a mirror, I guess. But if you're going to do that, why not just put, like, a dresser in here, too? I don't know. That's kind of weird. Also, this bathroom doesn't have a flooring. That's the default floor. Not that there's anything wrong with using concrete as flooring, but it, that kind of seems more like a mistake. No, maybe it's not. I don't know. It kind of goes with it, but it, it just seems a little odd. No, no, I guess maybe they meant that. Uh, I mean, they could have meant it because the rest of the interior, <laughs> I mean, the colors and, and all the items are not, not ideal either. Uh, yeah, what is with these? <laughs> I know these windows are the ones over the roof, but looking from the inside, it looks even more strange. Like, probably would have used smaller ones. Anyway, that, that's this build. Beautiful. 
Absolutely beautiful. The Miner's Mansion. Just fantastic. All right, so we've got the two apartments here uh, side by side. Let's check them out. So this is a little apartment here. I mean, it's nothing nothing too special. It's uh, definitely nicer than the other ones uh, in the other neighborhood. So, uh, you know, look, uh, you know what? Why? So they, they added a really beautiful new wood floorboard in this pack. Why would they not use it in here? It just it instantly makes it look so much nicer. I don't know. Anyway, let's just put it back. So this is the default that you get. Uh, pretty sad, pretty depressing. They've used the dimmest lights. I guess it's going to be pretty cheap. Would be yeah, lot value nine thousand. It's pretty cheap, uh, which makes sense. So you can save a bunch of money. Little bathroom there. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I was about to say nothing crazy, but this bedroom is massive. That is pretty crazy. You could easily get a second bedroom in there. Very very easily. Put a wall right there. Single bedroom. Boom. Cool. I mean that's that one. Well, I guess here's here's the outside of the building as well. Uh, that's like that and it does again this changes as well with the world I probably should show the quarry as well That's like sitting over here. It's the big main feature of this neighborhood But we'll see it better when we go over here to the community lot So here we are at the quarry building. This is what it looks like by default It's got the big quarry all around it all this water uh, that water is not swimmable You cannot go in that. Um, I don't think there's any swimming in this world at all But that is the little quarry lot you can sort of enter it from over here I, I mean, it's a really cool scenery. I think it looks great in this area and the actual lot itself with all the trash again I love these sort of trashed pre-trashed lots. I don't know. I really like it. Oh, it's got bathrooms very nice And then let's have a look at the variations. So here we have the community garden variant Obviously lots of grass nice trees a lounger some solar panels out the back the recycle machine and the dew collector insect houses Lots of garden uh, planting spots there as well inside a little lounge. Oh, there's a little kitchen in here, too That's handy and then downstairs, we've just got a mostly empty space. I think a lot of this, you could go in and just add a few items yourself when these pop up, which would be kind of nice. Uh, oh, and a little wind turbine out the front. Cool. Let's check out the marketplace. Oh, the marketplace takes out a lot of the bottom floor, actually. So we've got the market selling tables down the bottom there. We've got the little food stand over there, a little dining area up top. Uh, then we've also got... A uh, little indoor bathroom, a little sitting area with a fireplace. Uh, we've also got downstairs a little uh, dollhouse for the kids. That's quite nice. I mean, I'd probably want to add a few more things to this one. I mean, I feel like the marketplace one is probably the least useful, in my opinion. The garden's kind of good because you could just go there and plant stuff. And the maker space is also very useful. Especially because the marketplace, with those selling tables, you can just drag a selling table to your inventory and drag it out anywhere. So I could come and sell stuff here anyway. And this is way, way more useful because you get all the crafting stations. Um, anyway, so this is, whoa, this looks completely different. Dang, that's kind of cool. I, I, kinda, I don't know about the red roof. I mean, it, it is definitely a little bit of uh, pizzazz added to it, but I don't know about it. Anyway, so this is the maker space uh, in the old quarry building. And then we've got, yeah, all the crafting stuff down there, bathrooms up top, and uh, a little kitchenette without uh, a, a fridge or a stove, so just a sink. I don't know. I mean, it looks like it's supposed to be a kitchen, but it doesn't have the stuff in it. Um, but yeah, that is it. I mean, that is kind of the tour of the entire world. I guess we didn't really check out the neighborhoods themselves, like the scenery. But you can kind of see this one here. This is Grimm's Quarry area. So this is our community lot. We've got the uh, little starter home over there. The miner's mansion is up the back there. And then we've got the apartment, I think is this one here. I can't highlight it though, because it's an apartment, but I think it's that one there. And just before ending up this video here, I wanted to show you what happens when you have a really green eco footprint. There's no pollution in the air. You actually get the Aurora Borealis that I was talking about earlier. So this will appear at nighttime. You get like the northern lights appearing above the neighborhood that it's in. Um, oh, oh, okay, there it is again. I lost it for a minute. <laughs> so that will appear at nighttime over the neighborhood that has that's really clean. It's got the green eco footprint down here. I, I fall into the ground. That's no use. Uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of what happens with that. And then that sort of changes. And then obviously Obviously in the port world, which is currently polluted, here the air is just like brown and smoggy and really hazy and you can't really see very much. There's no northern lights. It is disgusting and polluted. And she's also getting a trait of an unnatural environment because of all of that. So that is the world of Evergreen Harbor, all the neighborhoods and all the lots. There's some that are a little bit questionable, some that I actually really, really like. I, I do love this lot here. Uh, and some of them uh, just have a few issues and others are just kind of boring and there's nothing wrong with them But that's the world. I mean, it's got I guess 11 proper buildable lots. So it's it's okay in terms of size um, I guess time will tell if I really enjoy playing in it more or if it's just because it's a new world I'm excited to check it out. Uh, so it'll be kind of cool, uh, but definitely a few mistakes uh, that uh, probably <laughs> should have been uh, <laughs> checked they, they still 
Really got to check some of those lots. Oh, actually, also, speaking of lot, uh, we didn't really talk about lot sizes. There's no big lots in this world. Like, the biggest is 40 by 30, which I guess is kind of big, but it's really not that big. Most of them are quite small. There's no, like, 50 by 50s or 64 by 64. There's none of those kind of lots, no 40 by 40s even. Uh, it's all quite small, which is always a shame because the world itself is smaller. And then we also just don't get large lots, which is kind of weird because when we actually, when we're in each of these neighborhoods, you can see how expansive the area is. So it's almost like, here's this big neighborhood that you can check out, but here's this tiny little lot that you can build on and do nothing else with the rest of it. So it's kind of a shame in that sense. I wish I would give bigger lots. And I also wish that um, they just made it, made them bigger. I mean, make the worlds, not necessarily the worlds bigger, but just more, more lots. Like if you, if you can't make the lots bigger, make more of them. I don't know. I mean, there's obviously reasons that they do this. I don't know what they are, but I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like those reasons. Uh, I would like more lots. I would like them bigger. I would like more options with lots. All that kind of stuff. I don't know. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of Evergreen Harbor in the comments down below. Thanks again to EA for the early access of this. And sorry for also, you know, destroying some of the builds. Uh, some of them are, are, are pretty bad. I think it's uh, overall not too bad. Overall not too bad with some of the lots. And I, I, quite, I quite like the look of the world. But yeah, we'll see how we go over time if we keep playing with it. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day.